Let's talk about movies. If there is a movie that affected me on a personal level, that changed the way I look at movies, stories, even life itself, a movie that teaches so much without saying it directly to your face, with the meaning deeply embedded into its heart, it has to be Life of Pi. Directed by Ang Lee with the help of Claudia Miranda and Bill Wistenhofer's visual magic, backed up by the unsettling enigmatic score of Michael Dana, all of these creative personalities won Academy Award for their extraordinary portrayal of Jan Martel's therapeutic and profound study of words on screen. The story is about Pai Patel, a multi-religious Indian boy shipwrecked in the company of an adult Bengal tiger. Life of Pai is filled with spiritual references, visual poetry, and questions that seem to have no definite answer, but yet are associated with the deepest characteristics of the principle of humanity and morality. Questions about the relativity of the truth, questions about faith, even the basics of life itself. And the film does not shy away from the spiritual questions, in fact it starts off as a story that will make you believe in God. And it doesn't disappoint. It stands up to the claim asking questions about the existence of God and more importantly, should you believe in God? It is true that the movie throws multiple questions regarding that instead of just giving simple answer. But if you watched closely and understood every aspect of it, you'll know that it teaches us something very important. Something which matters much more than just one simple answer. It teaches us the ultimate lesson of truth, life and the nature of God. Hi everyone, I am Akshun and welcome to this video. At the very core, Life of Pi is about dealing with a major obstacle in life. It is about the struggle pushing oneself across the limit one can bear. Be it a bad breakup, an official matter, the death of a loved one, or someone stuck in an endless ocean. One suffers to the point one starts doubting his or her belief, morals, and reality. In Pi's case, this belief is a spiritual one his faith in God, the one he gathered throughout his life. The film even starts by leading us straight into Pai's encounters with multiple religions. We see him building up his faith through curiosity which led him to be a multi-religious man. Thank you, Vishnu, for introducing me to Christ. One such aspect of his faith is his belief that animals are just like humans, that even a natural predator as violent as a Bengal tiger deep down has a sense of reality and understanding, a belief that Richard Parker has a soul. We know that this belief is strong that even after it has been tested by his father in this scene, when his father tries to break his faith by saying, when you look into his eyes, you are seeing your own emotions reflected back at you. He doesn't change. But is his belief strong enough that even after he has lost everything he had, with the haunting risk of being stuck in the ocean forever, and a sign that his belief is probably not true, that his father was right all along, that Richard Parker is not his friend? It's pretty rational and easy for one to lose his faith and belief at such moment. But Pai isn't one of those. We see Pai's internal struggle reflected out on the ocean. And with one beautiful transition, the filmmakers make it clear what Pai's decision is. From colorless and unstable to golden and calm. Golden color, which according to Hindu mythology, is the color of knowledge. It is also considered as the color of triumph, as Pai wins over the doubt in his mind caused by the ultimate tragedy and decides that he wants to stick to his faith and belief that behind this obvious animal nature, there is much more to Richard Parker, a sense of emotional identity. Pai accepts his fate and is ready to struggle for survival, both for his spiritual and physical self. The film constantly uses colors to symbolize certain ideas and emotions. Besides yellow and golden, which are used to symbolize victory and wisdom, like him finding water or him taming Richard Parker, the other important color the film uses is the color orange. The symbolic color of Hinduism, orange represents ambition and spirituality. Right from the point the ship sank, all of the things that helped Pai survive are all colored in orange. 
the life jacket, the whistle, his raft, and the life boy, even the orange Bengal tiger that keeps by alert and on the journey to survival. Orange signifies courage and faith. We hear from Pai himself how much he needs Richard Parker, even if the tiger wants to eat him any point it can. Without Richard Parker, I would have died by now. My fear of him keeps me alert. Tending to his needs gives my life purpose. But even though Richard Parker represents faith for Pai, Richard Parker shows no sign of understanding. And the writer uses this to emphasize on the spiritual and physical struggle inside Pai. The writer uses Richard Parker as a metaphor for the survivalistic nature of Pai. And it's not coincidence that Pai refers to himself as the tiger in the second story. As the tiger doesn't have any spiritual morals and will go to any extent to stay alive, like when Pai breaks his spiritual vegetarian fast by eating fish, Pai fears that this animalistic survivalistic nature might eat out his spiritual ones, just like Richard Parker eating Pai. That is why Pai decides to tame Richard Parker and metaphorically tame his inner animal, as he can't kill it because out here in the ocean with no food, the spiritual nature alone cannot survive. After that, we get one of the most memorable and beautiful scenes of the film. The point that Pai has been waiting for all his life. A hint. A glimpse that he may be right. That the way Richard Parker looks at him with a sense of understanding and sympathy. Like Richard Parker acknowledges the situation they are in and quite possibly relates it with Pai. Meaning that Richard Parker probably has a soul. But right at this point, we have a funny feeling that the movie is now tricking us into believing or thinking something which isn't true. The most important aspect to point out is the hallucination. But even before that, we get this shot. The aspect ratio changes into a shorter one, a visual motive about the change in the medium of the story that maybe there isn't much reality to show through Pai's perspective. Also notice that the depletion of his pencil is very well juxtaposed with the fact that he can't keep track of reality anymore. At last he finally has another encounter with the all-powerful God, taking everything from him, whatever he built, even his words, resulting in suffering only. But he still doesn't break his faith, as he completely surrenders himself to God, ready to die. Just at this point of dying, he stumbles upon the green, the color of hope. We have seen green earlier as a sign of hope, but this island is the best example of it. This perfect island shows the miraculous nature of God, about how God is ready to bring unimaginable miracles to people who surrender themselves upon Him, never breaking their faith. With the color green, fresh water, unlimited food for both Richard Parker and Pai, he decides to stay here for the rest of his life, as he ties the bracelet Anandi gave him, a memento for home. Only after he finds out that the island is carnivorous, visualized with the green that now looks toxic, Pai finds out that this is false salvation. Notice that the island looks like a paradise from up close, but a lying dead body from far behind. Many of us relate the temporary relief with the end of our journey, but that's not it. Stopping yourself at that point will ultimately result in your destruction. There is only one way to complete your journey, and that is true salvation. Pai understands this and leaves the island after the necessary rest to struggle once again finally reaching ashore. But wait, what is going on? A floating carnivorous island with millions of meerkats that no one has ever seen before? This can't be true, right? Just like this, or the fact that Pai was on a boat with four animals. So the story with the cook, Buddhist, his mother and himself is more reasonable than the story with the hyena, zebra, orangutan and the tiger. And the conclusion our logical mind comes up with is that Pai was hallucinating, coping with the tragedy, that Pai was just imagining things. But still, it doesn't matter if he was. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that Pai would have survived if Richard Parker wasn't there with him? 
or if he didn't imagine the island that gave him hope and rest. Do you think Pai would have survived and will be here right now, happy with the family, if he believed the second story? The much darker and emotionally disturbing story of cannibalism, hatred and evil in human. The anti-God story that will destroy Pai's faith in God. Do you think he could believe it? No, he wouldn't. Even though the second story could be the true one, it doesn't matter. Because in the end, it's only about sticking to your belief. And you should prefer the story which helps you in doing that. Sometimes the truth doesn't matter. Because stories are more than just facts. Stories are more emotional and human than just the truth. And that is why this moment is so important for the film's message and understanding the limits Pai will go through neglecting the truth. Life is about letting go. And no one can understand this enough than someone who left everyone without saying goodbye. So the thought that Richard Parker leaves him without a gesture of goodbye, without even looking back, wouldn't it break his fate? Wouldn't it mean that Richard Parker never felt anything other than the need to survive? That his father was right. Richard Parker is just a tiger and not his friend. And that is where we see the limit Pai is willing to go to follow his belief. Because Pai is literally limitless. That even after seeing it with his own eyes, knowing that his father was right, he has to believe otherwise. He has to believe that Richard Parker had a soul. That he meant to say goodbye. So he simply believes. Oh my god, this was a big video, and it really took me more than a week finishing it. I really worked my ass on this, so if you liked it and found it decent enough, please show me some encouragement. Like, share, and comment on what you thought about the video or the movie. If you're new on this channel, which you probably are, and you want to see more of this content, subscribe and check more of my videos. Well, that's it for now, and I'll see you next week with some other movie.